Hello. We're going to be talking about uh, single transistor BJT amplifiers. And the first example of that we're going to see is the common emitter amplifier or CE amplifier. Uh, the name common emitter uh, is because the emitter is considered the common terminal, meaning the input is applied between base and emitter, the in and the output is taken at the collector and so is the voltage measured from collector to emitter. Now, in this case, uh, it may not seem quite uh, so because we've added an emitter resistor RE. Um, but normally in a common emitter configuration, RE doesn't have to be there. We have, we've added it for bias stability. And so uh, the standard common emitter configuration will just have the emitter connected to the common terminal, which is uh, typically ground. And so uh, input signal from base to emitter, output signal from collector to emitter. The addition of the emitter resistor for biasing purposes, though, does not change the configuration of the circuit. It's still a common emitter amplifier. So we mentioned that whenever we are doing design or analysis of transistor amplifier circuits, we're going to split uh, the exercise into the DC Q point component and the AC small signal component. And so first we're going to look at the circuit and we're going to analyze uh, the DC operating point, or in this case, it's a design problem. So design uh, the circuit to have the correct DC bias point that we want. So DC biasing. Now notice that in this case, uh, we are inputting the signal to the circuit through a coupling capacitor, which I've labeled as CC1. And we are taking the output out of the collector through another coupling capacitor, which is labeled as CC2. Those coupling capacitors are in place uh, to make sure that the input signal does not interfere with the DC operating point of the circuit. And so um, uh, what I expect is that those capacitors will behave as open circuits to DC signals um, and as short circuits for AC signals. And so for the DC biasing purpose, we am going to assume that CC1 and CC2 behave as open circuits. And so the steps to designing a uh, voltage divider or four resistor biasing network in this case, uh, first we need to select, well, first we need to draw the circuit skeleton, which we've already done. Uh, then typically we select uh, what is our quiescent current that we're going to uh, fit into the circuit. Uh, in this case, uh, we've already decided that this 0.5 milliamps is part of our design specifications. We want the circuit to be run from a single supply of 20 volts uh, with a collector current of 0.5 milliamps, as I stated here. So I'm just going to leave it as that. But uh, in general, when we are designing, let's imagine we're designing a larger circuit, a multi-stage amplifier, we're going to need to allocate um, the quiescent current to the different parts of our circuit in a way that it doesn't exceed our overall um, current that the supply can provide. So normally we will be selecting that as a design parameter. The second thing is, remember we've mentioned that in order to have beta stability, we want our um, emitter voltage to be approximately equal to one volt. Um, it's just a rule of thumb, nothing says it has to be exactly one, but we want it to be a high enough value to provide um, temperatures or beta stability without uh, decreasing our output voltage swing too much. So we don't want to go too high um, so that we decrease our output voltage swing. We don't want to go too low so that we don't have very good uh, beta stability for our circuit. We decided one volt was a fairly good compromise. So I'm going to choose my value for our E resistor to set VE to one volt. And again, this is to get a, a beta stable Q point. And so RE by Ohm's law is equal to the uh, voltage on the emitter divided by the current through the emitter resistor, which is approximately the emitter current is going to be approximately equal to the collector current. And so this will be one volt over 0.5 milliamps or two kilo ohms. So we have the value for our emitter resistor, two kilo ohms. Next, I'm going to design my voltage divider biasing network, and that involves selecting values for R1 and R2. 
uh, I want my transistor to be on, and so if my emitter voltage is set to uh, 1 volt, I will want my base voltage to be 0 0.7 volts higher than that, so that I have a 0 0.7 volt drop across the base emitter uh, junction. So I'm going to choose R1 and R2 to set uh, VB to approximately equal to 1.7 volts. And uh, we can see that R1 and R2, we spoke about how they form a voltage divider network. That's why this is called a voltage divider bison network. And so the amount of uh, voltage across each one of the resistors or the ratio of the voltages across the resistors is going to be dictated by the ratio of those resistances. Uh, so because we have a voltage divider, we have that the ratio of R1 to R2 is going to be equal to the ratio of the voltages across R1 and R2. Uh, we want the voltage across R2 to be 1.7 volts and the voltage across R1 will be... Um, the 20 volts of my supply minus the 1.7 volts that falls across R2. So 20 minus 1.7 over 1.7, which is 18.3 over 1.7. So that's the ratio that I want for R1 and R2. Uh, we spoke when we were talking about biasing, how um, there is uh, a connection uh, from R2 to the base of the transistor. And so there is a resistance that is seen by that transistor. We call that uh, we will call that RIB is the resistance looking into the base of the transistor. And that's in parallel with R2 for the purposes of the voltage divider. Um, and so in order to have a stable value of base voltage, we need for um, R2 to be much smaller than that resistance looking into the base of the transistor. And we spoke about how we could calculate that resistance by using the reflection rule. Which tells us that the resistance looking into the base of a transistor, RIB, is equal to the resistance connected to the emitter of the transistor uh, multiplied times a factor of beta. So in this case, beta times RE. And so for our one consideration for our voltage divider network is that in order to have a stable value of base voltage, I want for R2 to be much smaller than beta times RE. And we mentioned how one order of magnitude typically meets that much smaller uh, requirement. So less than or equal to one tenth beta times RE. And uh, one tenth of beta times R is equal to 20 kilo ohms. And so I can choose my R2 to be less than or equal to 20 kilo ohms. I'm going to um, select it to be exactly 20 kilo ohms. And that implies that my R1 is then going to be 220 kilo ohms. So I can write those values in my circuit. All right, and uh, one final step, we need to figure out the value of RC. And since in a common emitter amplifier, we're taking the output out of the collector, uh, we typically want the collector voltage to be centered. The reason for that is um, our output signal is going to oscillate around that Q point value. Um, and so we want it to be able to go up and down by, you know, um, as large an amount as possible, that's going to give us uh, the output swing for our signal. And so we typically want to center it. Um, now, in all reality, we do have uh, 1 volt dropping across resistor RE, and we need 0.3 volts across our transistor collector to emitter in order to keep the transistor out of saturation. And so um, the collector voltage needs to be at least 1.3 volts. It cannot go any lower than that. 
Um, and so ideally, we, you know, we could center the signal between uh, 1.3 volts and 20 volts, and that will give us certainly our maximum output voltage swing. For simplicity, I'm just going to center it at 10 volts. So I'm going to choose RC to center uh, V out. And again, that's just to increase my output swing. So my um, collector voltage is going to be equal to VCC minus the voltage drop across the collector resistor, which is IC times RC. And so I can solve for my uh, collector resistor. I want uh, VC to be equal to 10. And that gives me a collector resistor of 20 kilo ohms. And I'm uh, basically done. This is the DC uh, biasing network for my amplifier. Uh, one thing uh, to mention is uh, about the emitter resistor. Uh, we've introduced it in there uh, for biasing stability, stability of the Q point against uh, beta variations. We're also going to see later on how it also improves uh, temperature stability for the circuit. Uh, but that resistor is typically named the emitter degeneration resistor. So just a point of information for you to know. Emitter degeneration resistor, the reason why it is uh, referred to with that name is simply that uh, degeneration is another name that is typically given to negative feedback. And that's exactly what the resistor is doing there. It's providing negative feedback to the circuit for uh, temperature stability. Thank you.